Hello everyone, this is Possibly from Folk Charm Thailand and I'm sorry I'm not there in person but I hope that we will all have a fruitful discussion today. So today I'll be sharing story of Folk Charm and um, through the eyes of consumers or everyone outside, Folk Charm is a natural handwoven apparel and accessories um, store um, crafted by rural communities for a simplistic contemporary lifestyle and here is some of our collections. And for upcycled um, fabric from off from off cuts, we turn into these products. And this is our new um, collection last end of last year. So uh, the key message of folk charm is simple but significant. Here are the uh, key issues we address. First is the aging communities in rural areas. And the younger generation are not interested in doing the crafts or traditional crafts that have been passed down for generations anymore. And there is also a problem with unfair middlemen, which leads to no access to a fair market. And of course, the lack of product development and, and because they are not aware of their own potentials. So these are the key social issues that Folk Charm started with. And then um, once we really start to work on this project, um, we realized that there are a lot more drastic environmental issues such as um, intensive chemical farming of cotton and of course of other cash crops in Thailand, especially in the northeastern part of Thailand. And in fashion and craft products, there's a lot of um, brands that come out. We use the word greenwashing to come out as uh, ethical brands. But um, at, at the end of the day, um, the environment or the society is not really benefiting from it. And of course, um, the impacts of uh, modern cotton farming that uses a lot of water and chemical and, and pesticides as well as um, GMO seeds. And there's also an intensive use of harmful chemicals in crafts and, indust and also in industrial scale fashion industry. So these are the problems that of course anyone can see these days. And um, ultimately the biggest challenge and problem that we see is a lack of consumer awareness on the value of traditional crafts rural livelihood and slow fashion. These are the three pillars that we work by and um, we will slowly go into details one by one. We use the word fair a lot in what we do um, and the way we interpret it is we use the keywords empowerment and mutual interest um, on one side and on the other side we use the word transparency and traceability. Um, we think that um, to, to be a social enterprise or to be any kind of entity that promotes ethical consumption and ethical sales of products, I believe that transparency and traceability are the keys. In this case, we talk about transparent pricing um, and traceable supply chain. Um, and in, in terms of empowerment, we look at skills development, we co-create products with communities, and um, we really have to brand ourselves as a business and not a charity. And at the end of the day, the bottom line is um, a fair price for livelihood, fair to their time, fair to the environment, and fair to the health of the makers, as well as the health of the consumers. Farm to fashion. Honestly, I feel like I don't recommend people to do what, what we do because it's quite a long entire supply chain and it's quite complicated. But, um, but here I will talk more about how we do it. So these are the key I wouldn't say business model, but the key process as to how we work. So at first, the cotton is grown rain fed. So we grow during rainy season and we harvest right after the rainy season in about December. It takes about three months for three or four months for the cotton to bloom and we're able to pick it. Um, the process of growing is quite traditional. They use um, local strains of cotton, local seeds, and um, we don't, they don't use chemical pesticides or fertilizers. And when they take out the weed, they literally remove it by hand. Um, and also, so this is a traditional way of farming. And of course, um, the second process is the tra traditional method of cotton processing, which is very rare now, of course, especially in Southeast Asia. Um, you can see some in Myanmar, in Laos, but it's quite, it's quite rare because it's very time consuming. It's very skilled um, intensive. So the whole process is to um, hand spin the yarn um, and we use only locally found natural dyes and it's all hand woven. Um, 
And at the community level, we have a community network, we have a group, we have established a group um, that constitutes of four villages and we have one group head. And of course, we also have a small group central fund to support um, activities of the group, such as um, travels to study more um, skills, such as natural dyeing, um, better skills in, in product development, things like that. And um, of course, after, after the communities or, or the weavers um, um, collect, get their fabrics collected or their products corrected, then they're all sent to Bangkok, to our studio, which is here where I am right now. And at Folk Charm Studio, we do the designing, the stock management, the quality control, the sales, and the marketing. And, um, and then once we decide on the designs, we are then sent, the products are then sent, then the fabric is then sent to the home-based sale tailors, seamstresses, and craftsmen who work from home. Um, I did not mention earlier, but um, the entire process is home-based. So um, we really focus on um, people who are a little bit in the elderly sphere, so they're about 30 plus, and the ones who have responsibilities at home or really are not so mobile, so they have to work from home. So this applies to both the farmers, the weavers, the hand spinners, as well as the seamstresses and the craftswomen and tailors in Bangkok. Um, the products are then sent back to us. We do the washing, we pre-wash everything, we do the processing, and then um, we sell through our website, our online shop, we have social media, and um, key, the key income comes from exhibition craft fairs and a local organic markets. So just to sum up the process as to how intensive, quite intensive, skill intensive it is, so the cotton takes three months to grow, the hand spinning of the yarns, if you work two full days, like eight hours a day, you can potentially get one kilo of yarn. So it's, and it's very skilled intensive. So in this aspect, we use a lot, um, a lot of elderly who are from home and they can just easily spin um, to send the yarns to the younger weavers to weave the, the cotton. Um, we use only local plant dyes that are found in the local area. The products are then hand woven, which takes one or two, one or uh, one and a half days, sorry, about one day to make 1.5 meters or about one weaver, one meter of, of cotton, of fabric. Remember that um, they don't work on weaving all day because they have other activities. Some of them still do small scale farming. Some of them has to, you know, like cook and do all of these other, other activities at home. So we sort of don't force them to, to work in a, in a timeline. And um, everything is cut and sewn one by one. We use only tailors. We don't use any factories. So they're quite slow made per tailor. You can only get about 30 to 40 pieces or a little, maybe a little higher if the designs are a little simpler. So all in all, our products are 100% locally sourced. So a little bit of history. Um, Folk Charm launched as a project in May 2014 and we were registered as a company in February 2016. Starting with Lai, in just with just five cotton farmers and weavers in one village, we are now working directly with over 30 elderly weavers and indirectly with over 10 elderly yarn hand spinners from five villages. Um, we started off with just two tailors to now about eight home-based tailors, seamstresses, and craftswomen in Bangkok. And the process is what I've just mentioned, just pictures here. So um, so this is the natural cotton strain. You can see that the cotton is like um, more round and lower. And um, this is our yield. Um, we use only traditional methods of cotton processing and hand spinning. And these are some of the local dyes you can find in the area. And of course, hand woven into fabric. And it's finished at home by the home-based tailors. Back in our studio, we do a lot of um, stock management, design, and orders, and this is where all of the magic happens. This is our studio. You're welcome if you ever come to Bangkok. And fabric offcuts are then turned into bags and accessories like this. Our values, as I mentioned, um, I will break into more of the four key words and explain to you how we work co-creation, interconnectedness, transparency, and traceability. So every roll of fabric comes with the names of the artisans 
and the type of weave and the meters written. So here we take we keep track of all the weavers, how much income they've earned from from us throughout the years. Um, when the items are delivered to customers, um, if it's off the loom products, off the loom meaning um, finish fresh off the looms, we can then sell it, such as um, scarves, handkerchiefs, and um, how do you call this? Um, satchels. So they make side satchels from the from from just one finished product. These are the things that we uh, then have photos of the makers in there. Otherwise, we have names of the tailors, the dyers, and the weavers on it. We also communicate a lot of the stories on <clears throat> on the website, and um, and of course we have blogs. You can check that out on worldwideweb.folktime.com. And um, we have, of course, the Facebook page where we communicate our story mainly in Thai for the Thai audience. Um, yes, yeah, so this is where we share our stories. And of course, we are part of the Fashion Revolution campaign last year. This is, these are our photos. In terms of transparency, um, from our current price, this is our price breakdown. So you can see that we, we think that um, transparency is quite important for both the consumers and the tailors and weavers. Um, so about 50 to 55% of the income, direct income to Folk Charm, goes back to the makers. So we keep only about 35 to 10% and 10% for our management costs within the organization. Uh, with us, it's the first time the artisans know what their woven materials are made into and sold to whom. So, They've never really seen their finished products of their woven fabric before working with us. So we would then bring the photos back to them, um, how we set up the boots and um, the clothes they can try on. So um, they were really all usually very amazed as when we bring our new collection to, to show them every time. And so, yeah, and of course they know exactly how our products are priced and, um, and we explain how we price the products and our costs, what our costs are. So these are the aunties with their woven fabric that are turned into products. Co-creation. In this case, I don't apply to business co-creation, but what I mean here is more in design and and um, and development of the products together with the communities. So in the local area, there is a local establishment here where they all come and submit their cotton. The cotton is then checked by every square centimeter if there's any um, defects and then they're then fixed before it's sent up to Bangkok. So this is our kind of like headquarter. Um, and we very much emphasize on two-way conversations. And in, both of the patterns and design and colors are co-designed with communities. We look at what colors they make and how they can make and their potential and improvement. And then we then um, design the, the, the patterns of the fabric together. Um, we also have a quality control committee. From our These are our most experienced artisans. They're very detail oriented. They're very skilled and they're very, how do you say, um, they have great skills for, for fixing things. So now there are committee members of whom get paid partly from Folk Charm, partly from the head to, um, to check the quality of the products um, before sending to us. This was quite new. Before this, it was quite challenging to get the quality ready and to get um, things sent to us that are already in high quality for, for selling. We didn't have this before. So with them coming in, it was very helpful. In terms of interconnectedness, we really believe that the true value of the products are, should be reflected through um, the stories behind it. And vice versa. So we are we have to focus on great products, good products, with a great story, and the great story that is part of the good product. Um, so we respect a lot about their nature and um, the little rural livelihood, and um, and see how the urban consumers can then appreciate the how how their products have been made. So these are the humans of folk term. Um, so village to village. Before this, um, because there were the villages are quite spread spread out, but then with folk charm, at least they would have to meet once a month from three villages and share their stories, share their te weaving techniques, and have lunch together and have a meeting. So this is what is happening now in the community area. 
district to district. So um, one of our weaving groups is from a different district. For aunties to travel across district is quite um, uncommon for them as well because um, they're usually quite old and they don't know how to ride in auto, auto, auto bikes. So from generation to generation, this auntie has taught her daughter how to hand spin the cotton just at the start of folk charm. And through folk charm travels, our, the key part of this, this, um, this project is, this program is to allow the consumers to understand how their products are made and understands the humans behind their products. So we then bring um, the makers, and the, sorry, the consumers into making the products, into how to make the products in the communities. Here they're learning from uncle directly how cotton is farmed. Um, this is a bunch of Japanese who visited and um, was really um, was, was really appreciated by the stories that's given by uncle right here. Um, he has an entire farm of organic farming with um, lots of types of crops and um, and this main group was really learning about what the, the true happiness in life was and they we really got that from him. And here country to country so we have a group of, of various people from different countries here um, who joined our trip and just last week together with fashion revolution we organized this tour and um, and of course they learned how to hand spin the cotton um, local lifestyle and, um, and 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 they really communicated and linked with the, the makers so here are some of our impacts this used to be uh, an intensive maize farm a couple of year, years back after a one year later, they cut everything down, they rested the soil, and is now an organic cotton. Um, this, co this cotton farm does not belong to us. None of the stuff belongs to us. What we did was that we, um, we, we designed the community process. We come up with a fair pricing through, we have our own standard of how we price the products. And then um, we support some of the seed funding or seed um, needful um, materials. For them to get started and basic um, skills like natural dyings and um, product design. So um, and from that they then are their own um, boss so they can control the amount of crop they grow and how they weave and things like that. Um, here Auntie Dang right here um, her grandchildren has never seen hand spinning yarn before until Folk Charm came in and then started to, um, they started to, to spin the cotton again. And the income from weaving in the communities increased by 30 to 50 percent. And uh, since 2016, we have generated over 4 million baht back to the communities. And you can see here, more than 90 percent of our packaging is from recycled or re reusable or biodegradable materials. So we really try to be quite mindful in our entire process. The key challenges is what I would really love to share and um, we really have to be realistic once we are social enterprises as to how we're doing um, as a business and how we're making impacts. So um, the lessons I learned um, are this. Once, because I'm an outsider working with communities, to create trust really takes time. For me, it's over two years for them to really understand my process, how I work and why I do what I do. Um, one another one is that um, community conflicts and conflicts of interests is quite inevitable when you work with the communities and um, learning how to manage it, how to avoid it and how to um, to not affect the community um, dynamics is, is challenging and finding the balance in the community development and making profit is challenging and also finding my own personal balance in as an entrepreneur and as a person is has also been quite challenging. Um, of another one is also how to how do you brand truly as an empowerment and not using communities as tools to earn product, um, profit or how to not how to really make it a meaningful journey for the consumers and the makers and not to offend anyone I think this is a very in delicate um, task and the most 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 challenging thing is how to change the mindset of locals and consumers because our products are not cheap for Thai people and usually a lot of times we do they do a lot of they do bargain a lot and um, we try to change their mindsets that um, the products have value and um, a lot of value 
behind what you see and um, and how they can appreciate it better not just a beautiful product in front of them so that's something that we really try to change through our social media through our um, advocacy programs and activities these are the should nots um, because my background is in rural, rural development um, I really thought that I, ha I knew it all when I start, first started um, so it's not a good idea to make presumptions on, on what is good for communities and do not ever ever disregard their existing livelihood um, we have to respect how they life how they have been living not to change the local dynamics and how to work alongside that um, you have to be really clear about when you make any decisions or how you communicate or when you have community meetings with the with the with the, with the locals um, on on whose interest is it that you're speaking for is it yours is it the companies or who so that um, your voice is clear otherwise they also get a mixed message and interpret and translate it differently and hence create a negative impact on themselves and the group um, also there's a lot of um, we make a lot we tend to make a lot of speculations as development practitioners and um, we would and do not make those speculations become promises to them because once it upsets them it upsets the entire chain um, over when, and do not overvalue the resources at the same time do not undervalue what they can do um, you don't take ownership of the community unless you have to in terms of copyrights but um, at, apart from that the keyword empowerment here is very important um, and one is that I don't believe in monopoly and um, and never ever be too kind of lenient I think this is what NGOs and us um, with social backgrounds tends to do and it would damage us as a business in the end um, the shits though you have to be realistic about the community situation be sure that it's empowerment and not just helping or greenwashing um, do what you truly want to do have clear objectives I'm sure that it never really came as across as clear objectives in the beginning but once through time once you go through a lot, a lot of learning processes a lot of do's and don'ts a lot of mistakes then you would end up with a pretty clear objective about what you want to do for a folk charm personally our objective and vision has never changed but the way we work has changed completely for us to be here today and be sustainable financially um, quality control is very important especially for craft products regardless of of how community um, centric you are finding the balance is what you have to try to always try to do um, facilitate change do not force change um, and you will understand it as you go through it and the things to keep in mind are um, your, their culture the existing resources community's willingness this is key as well because a lot of designers tend to go and suggest what is better for the communities um, and, and end up not in the communities creating those products and end up not having the market for it so they, they kind of like lessen the value of, of the relationship between people from urban area visiting them and trying to develop something together um, and also consider their livelihood and consider that it's not just the money that they want it's also about community pride it's about personal pride it's about human value and connectedness with others that they may want and um, community's capacity has to really be considered and you have to understand the local dynamics before you do anything the inevitables is of course conflicts of interest community conflicts um, that you should never be involved with um, always making big mistakes and bad decisions is normal um, as a social enterprise there's a lot of sunk cost you have to know how to manage that and um, it's it's very no, quite normal for us to be taken advantage of and being cheated and that's what I've gotten used to throughout the years and um, to create change you have to be willing to be the cause of conflicts so this is our group and um, well just quickly I would like to go through another um, another another information cassette of information about Vogue's craft so Vogue's craft is um, an ethical craft hub in Thailand we have established ourselves about four years back just when we started Folk Charm together with a few other brands who have the same vision in, um, in starting a social enterprise for on crafts and so we, we try to be a matching and sharing and infusing group um, these are some of the brands and I'll talk to about them quickly later so the objective of the um, Vogue's craft is to link network and motivate 
um, each other and to share experiences to fulfill the gaps of capacity building and learning through the things we like for for example um, maybe whether it be product development or business development um, standard setting is very important so that's what we try to do for if you want to be a social enterprise if you want to be a fair trade ethical business um, what are the standards that exist and uh, you have to follow them and of course um, we feel that having more is better than none so um, being a, I feel like when we go to markets or selling alone it has less power and the message and the story is less loud if it's just one of you but when we organize ourselves together as a group um, it's a lot the message is a lot louder we all have different types of products we have different stories behind the products but one thing is the same is the whole ethical aspect of it and so um, yes so there's we want to create a market together and we have social advocacy together um, back to this so some of the ex examples is um, on the top right very detailed embroidery from the northeast of Thailand with indigo dyes um, working with communities and creating crafts through community stories and how the store the community sees um, their own um, surroundings through fabric and embroidery um, another one for example one for one they create toys for and we they try to encourage people to use their hands to create things again and they make wooden safe wooden toys for children um, another one is Wanita it the one that um, also British Council in Thailand is working with to create um, to develop products and um, increase the market visibility of, um, of products of the women in the deep south the, the ones that are affected by um, insecurities in Thailand for example their husbands or their sons have been affected or killed in insurgencies and um, these are some examples of course folk charm is one of them and uh, so these are some of the activities we had we have talks we had a market um, like this and we do go to markets together. This was in um, with the support of the British Council. This was in Korea. And we have talks. At workshops, this one we were teaching um, Shibori Indigo dyes. And that's about it. So, um, I, so I hope you have somewhat gotten uh, the glimpse of what Cold Charm is. And um, I look forward to the discussion. Thank you. Bye. Hãy subscribe cho